back to the Tomahawk. I am here with our special guest, Dom, the brush line, the emergency backup goalie we oh, desperately yes. need right now. Scotty, you doing, Scotty Foster, hey man, Scotty Foster <laughs> protocol in full effect. I'm not the guy you, you, you want, but I'm the guy you need. You're the, yeah, like Batman, you're not the hero we need right now. Some quote like that anyway. But, uh, so what's going on with you, man? Oh man, I'm 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 operating in the dark here. We're going we're going uh without light here this today. It's kind of weird. Yeah, it did get dark very very fast. It's been crazy, but when then you wake up at 7 it's brighter than all hell. Yeah, so it's going to take some time to get used to, but so we had two games we got to go over. Uh the first game, obviously we we beat the Kings in OT. Big win. I, I, I thought the Hawks really had no business winning that game. I think they were outshot by I, 10 to ten to 12, maybe. I mean, it's not that crazy, but I think the puck possession time was more towards the Kings. But, uh, hey, Soderblom got his first NHL win. Yeah. Uh, I, th- I believe he had 32 saves. And uh, I, I, I thought he was probably the player of the game. I think he kept the Hawks alive and... I mean, I great sign that we maybe we got a future goaltender here, but we'll get into what happened the next game. But uh, he was obviously probably the best game. I know Dickinson; he's staying hot. Uh, Taves ended up getting the the OT winner with a great pass by Jake McCabe. Out of all people, he's on the yeah. ice in overtime. Wow, it's kind of ballsy for from Richardson, but. He made a good pass, and Taves ended up burying it and winning the game. Yeah, that was a good feed there. Uh, you know, McCabe doing his best uh, Soupy Campbell impression, pinching in, and that was nice one-two uh, wham-bam. Yeah. yeah, that was great Great patience by him to hold it and wait for Taves to kind of break the, uh, just hit hit the open ice and wait for that one-timer pass and just bury it. But uh yeah, man, that's a that's a grinded out win for the Hawks, and that's uh, the the Kings. I, I mean, I think they're a playoff team this year. They they retooled. They got some good young guys coming in, coming in, and uh, obviously their core of Kopitar, uh, Dowdy, and obviously Quick. He's he's up there in age. He's I he's like you know Corey Crawford. You know he's he's not he's not getting that much respect anymore. But he's you know he's got two Stanley Cups. Very yeah. good goalie still. I think uh, he'll probably go down one of the best American goalies. But what do you think about these guys? Are are they are they a threat to you? You know, I don't know. The tougher tougher hockey is always out of the West. But I mean, I it was kind of a surprise to me showing how much I don't follow along with some of those West Coast teams. I totally forgot Quick was still even in the league. So you know, yeah. He's, very, he kind very, of lost his net last year, I believe. I think the other goalie is Cal Peterson. He's yeah. kind of up and coming, and they kind of... I don't know who got the majority of the games, but uh, I think Quick played in the playoff series. I, I, I want to say they played against the Oilers. And, yeah. uh, you know, that team's stacked. They're they're good. And, oh, yeah. you know, they got, they got a goalie this year. They got another Campbell, another Soupy. Jack Campbell, yeah. I, I'm a fan of him. I like him. I, he kind of took the long road to get, you know, a starting job, and he didn't really get the respect that he deserved in uh, Toronto. But what goal he does, you know, they're always kind of blaming the goaltenders and not the $13 million a year players that don't show up. But yeah. we, we won't get into that. But Yeah, that's a whole other show. I, I think the Kings are definitely a playoff team. And I know, we, I think our next game is against the Kings. It's going to be a rematch. And I think it's going to be a little bit different of a game. I think the Kings are going to come out flying. It's going to be probably a higher scoring type of game. I'm not sure uh, who's in net. But I, I did hear, actually, I heard from you that Mrazek is back and and we'll get yep. into the other goaltender <laughs> the other scenario in a couple minutes but uh yeah I, I'm, I'm gonna predict that the kings are gonna win the next game just because uh they're probably really pissed off they lost to a team like the hawks and i mean oh, yeah. they, they really had no business you know losing that game they, they were the better team the whole the whole game and they just uh they let the Hawks just kind of creep, uh, just creep along, and the Hawks kind of took advantage of a good Jake McCabe turnover, and that that was it. Yeah, no, and and that game was pretty, you know, despite the what the scoreboard said. Yeah, it 
it was it was pretty uh pretty dominant for the for the Kings and you know the Hawks kind of remind me they come they start off slow and then they come on strong late in the game which I guess isn't too un, un unusual for the last handful of years but um but yeah they they seem to stick around wouldn't go away easy and that 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 overtime deal towards the end there was a nice just nice play to make it make it bang bang come together so yeah the fact that the Hawks even stuck around was pretty pretty good um yeah yeah for at least for that for sure. there, yeah so uh, I gotta ask you though I want to yeah. ask you about uh your thoughts about Max Domi I know I I honestly I can't remember if it was against the Kings or it was the game before but Kaner took a pretty vicious hit and there was no penalty called, but you know, you don't, you don't touch Kaner. You know, if you're, yeah. he's the guy, you know, you don't, that's, that's like Gretzky getting hit and McSorley, you know, you, you got to face him. And yeah. we watched Max Domi literally grab the dude that hit Kaner. Just this guy was eating punches and I tweeted out, this is something the Hawks have lacked for years and years and years since, you know, like, you know, Bobby Probert and Vanden Bush, you know, players that, you know, took care of their teammates. I think maybe the last one I could say that was okay at it was maybe Adam Burrish, um, yeah. maybe Jamal Mayers, but not as much as Bob Probert, obviously. It's just, it was a different era and stuff. but. I loved it, man. I mean, this is I I hope this kid finds a way to stay on the team if Kaner stays on the team. And I mean, I don't know how what you feel about it because I, I it kind of seems like the Hawks signed him for like kind of like a like you said to me before, like as a pawn, as a to get a draft pick. But on the other hand, I think you know, me and Mike talked about this before. I think both parties are using each other. Like oh yeah. Domi is He's signed three million dollars a year. He's making good money. He's going to be obviously. He's playing with Patrick Kane. His numbers are going to be way better probably than they were last year. He's trying to buy another con, trying to get another contract. Makes sense for him. For the Hawks, okay, we're going to sign this kid. He's going to get good numbers. We're going to move him for a first round pick and build for our future. So either way, it's win win to me. But I like the style and impact that he brings to the Hawks. I love that protectiveness, you know, like the, the bodyguard type of role, the enforcer, because it's a dying breed. And I think Max Domi, he, he does it very well. Oh, I agree. I think the name alone, he's got a, a big legacy to fill, you know, a pedigree to, to fulfill in his family name. So obviously you're going to, guys not going to be uh, shy to have a little sandpaper in his game and, and, and bang around a little bit. I think, the way that the game has progressed from the, you know, the hockey that we grew up watching to what's happening now, it's more speed and finesse. And it's kind of been the Achilles heel for the Hawks for a really long time that anytime they have any kind of grit player, you know, they get, they get dealt in, you know, for return, another piece or another character player that just happens to be a little lower on grit and a little more on speed and, and skill. So, it's nice when you see them finally start fulfilling some needs because they're always in need for this. And you hope that, you know, they would stick around at least produce enough to be useful. But then you understand too, that it, it could be still be advantageous to, to use them what you, for ne- what you need to use them for now to, you know, protect the star players. And then yeah. if you can turn them into something useful, then it's all right. But yeah, if, they enjoy playing here and they're producing and they're protecting your guys. You, it'd be nice to keep a security, you know, get to keep a deposit on that investment. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've liked what I've, I've seen from him. Um, and I think that's, you need, need that on the team. So I'd like, I, me too. I would like to see him stay as, as well. But again, I guess it's, we're so early now. Let's see what, it's, yeah, it's year one. Let's, let's get yeah. after the first of the year, maybe. And yeah, see it's, it, it's year one of the rebuild and they're trying to, you know, obviously stockpile, you know, young talent and stuff. And he's, you know, he's, he's still young, but he, yeah. you got to keep people interested. You got to keep fans interested. And he's, 
you know, one of the, I think he, there, we have three like really impact new players. And I mean, you talked about this before, obviously Lafferty has been, I think he's been one of the best talks he's been, yeah. you know, uh, I tell him, I'm always saying it. He hustles every single shift. I feel like when he's four checking, if you hold a puck for longer than two seconds, he's either going to hit you or he's going to steal it and create a scoring chance. And that's yeah. why I think the penalty kill is so good. He is absolutely relentless. He is all over the puck carrier, and if he's chasing, and and that's why the Hawks' penalty kill has been very good. I know I think we gave up a power play last game, but I mean he's got a couple shorties, right? I think he's got like three shorthanded goals with his partner in crime. The other, yeah, the other kid we just acquired, uh, Dickinson, who's been yeah. very good too. Another good trade by Davidson. He's got. You know, two two really good role players that they're young, and you know what? You can you could fill in, you know, the holes around these guys, and this is could this could be a good checking line. You know, a tough yeah. a tough line to play against. And I I'm I think Max Domi for me is he's been good. I I mean I didn't expect much from him. I I thought last year he kind of gooned it up a little bit. Yeah, he, I think he, there was a time he was going after Debrinkat, maybe Kirby Doc. I'm like, come on, dude, really? Yeah, like that's, that's like Chuck well, going for... after Brian Gianta. Like, oh, you you're really tough, dude. Good, good for you. But this year, I mean, he's obviously wearing a Hawks jersey, and you know, he, I I like the guy. I'm glad he's on our team. But I think he, him, Dickinson, and Lafferty have been really solid. Like, you know, obviously trading and signing acquires acquirements and stuff like that. But I, I think I, I credit Davidson on that. There's some moves, obviously, I don't like that he made, but I really like those moves. And I guess, you know, you're talking about the grit with Hagel. And yeah. we, 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 get, we got two first-round picks for this guy. We got uh, Radish and Kachuk. Two, you know, NHL players, and then we got two future NHL players, possibly. But yeah. I don't think Davidson had a choice. He had to take that deal. But yeah. uh, obviously, we won't get into the Debrinkat stuff. I, I know you probably know how I feel about it. I think a young 40 goal scorer at 24 years old was not the right move. And, you know, yeah. Montreal is going crazy over Kirby Doc. He, you know, he's he's on a, a, what, 12 game? I think he's got 12 points or points in every game. Come on, like, are we going to put this dude in the freaking, like, the we're going to retire his number as a Canadian already? Like, they're going yeah. crazy. They're, like, almost like rubbing it in. <laughs> like Hawks and yeah. Hawks fans and stuff. It's like, dude, it, it's 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 early. He's really streaky, but you yeah. know, I he's got a new coach. Marty St. Louis knows the game, and he's kind of yeah. turned Cole Caulfield, Cole Caulfield's uh, career around uh, last year. He was, I think, they sent him down actually to the AHL, and then they sent him back. And I want to say he scored like twenty five goals in like thirty something games, which is really impressive. But you know, I mean, I, I give credit to Davidson for the moves that he did make, and I, you know, there's some there are some bad ones, but you know, we gotta you gotta stay behind him. I guess we 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 really don't have a say in who the GM's going to be, but yeah. But uh, moving on, I guess we'll we'll go into the uh, the Jets game, the early Saturday game. The I think it was a four o'clock game or something. Two, two o'clock. Game. Two o'clock. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah, but really. uh yeah we they were flat obviously they start you know it's 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 hard for hockey players you know you're so used to playing late games and then you're playing an early game away it's just like you know i thought the hawks were flat the first period uh soderblom i thought was really good he kind of picked up where he left off against the kings i was like damn making some good saves solid and uh, I think he gave up one power play goal i want to say maybe a sh- i think a shorty too but caleb jones he didn't. He didn't have a good game. I, I don't think you're a fan of him, are you? I don't think you like no. any of the Joneses, do you? No, I, I don't really care for any of the Joneses. I think. Oh, jeez, Tommy Lee Jones. Oh, well, Tommy Lee Jones is good. <laughs> I mean, he'll check every outhouse, doghouse, lion house. Yeah, he, damn it, he'll find you. Yeah, yeah. He, I just. I don't. Yeah, know. He had a rough game. He had a rough game, and the, you know the. I, I yeah, we got into this before. I I sent a tweet out before the game. I said. You know, just like a, just kind of like a reminder of who we're playing. Like we got an early game today. Hawks are taking on the Jets, and I said, I said the Jets have never really been, you know, an exciting team to watch and you know, kind of boring. But I did, you know, I did say, hey, there's some good players on the team. 
obviously Connor Hellebuck, he's very good goalie, American kid, kind of cheer for the guy. And uh, Kyle Connor, one of the most underrated players in the game, voted by the players, actually. He he is the most underrated player in the league. And I, I credit it like, hey, there's still exciting, exciting players, but just a boring team in general. And yeah. it, the Jets fans came out, all three of them, and they... Yeah. Uh, you know, they let me have it a little bit. They they said I that was a real L take, and I'm like, uh, I didn't know what that meant because I'm I'm yeah. 36. I'm old. I'm kind of I'm not hip. I'm not with it. And I asked my wife. She goes, "That means loser, babe." And I'm like, "Oh, geez, I must be a loser." But anyway, it's sorry, Jets fans. I'm, you're just it's not a sexy not a sexy team to watch. No, so I apologize. I no, I mean, you know, it's amazing because, you know, Hellebuck is, is a stud. I mean, he's, he's yeah. really, a, really a solid, solid tendy for, uh, for the league there. As, you know, a name, he's going to be a star, superstar for the team. You know, he, he seems pretty good. And I mean, yeah, I mean, the rest of the players. Out. Yeah, I know it was against the Hawks, but he, he got a shutout. He's a good goalie. He made some big saves. So. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, they got yeah. pretty far that one year. Uh, Let, yeah. The, the, that, and yeah. He anchored that. Yeah. So. I mean, you think they're just they're just a no frills team. They just go in, they put the blue collar work in, and they get they get a win. They never really ever have a clunker. So they just they always either get they they edge edge out the W or they uh, or they lose not by much. I mean, they're yeah meat and potatoes kind of team. So Nashville Predators of Canada, would you say? I think that could be fair. But yeah. then again, I haven't been watching the Purds since uh, Purds. last season. So yeah, I don't know what the the, as I call them, the Nashville Snaggletooth. I, I haven't uh, even followed anything from Nashville. I I, I didn't even look. I, I just they're they're so boring to me. You know, they're yeah. obviously Saros, very good goaltender. He's if he goes down, you're yeah. just dealing with an AHL team, in my opinion. But oh, yeah, uh, yeah I, I mean, I respect them. They're a good hockey team. They find a way to get in the playoffs every year. But you know, they 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 have trouble getting past the first round usually. So. But I don't want to. I don't want to bash them because you know they're obviously at a higher you know, yeah, rating than us and stuff like that. But uh, what's what's fun in that? I mean, you know, they're just gonna come out with the participation trophy banner to hang every year. So yeah, and throw your catfish on the ice in the third period while you hold it in your trench coat all day and let that fish just stink you up. That made no sense to me. At least the Red Wings are throwing the octopus. How, yeah, at least there's you know, a meme. At the first minute of the game, you know, they're not holding on to it like those weird Nashville fans. But That's anyway, that, that the second period, um, actually, I'm sorry, the third period, uh, Soderblom did not come back. And the recently signed goaltender, I think from the ECHL, his name is Dylan Wells. Yeah. He took over in the third. He faced 13 shots. He gave up one goal. I saw the goal. And you know what? I don't even think he had a chance on it. It was a good play. Cross yeah. ice pass, and the guy buried it. Can't really blame the kid. But no. uh, <laughs> we're getting reports today that Mrazic is back, and, <laughs> and Dylan Wells has been placed on waivers. So uh, how, how does this work? Does he get paid the full, like, whatever he signed for? Or does it cut in half once he's sent down to Rockford? You got to wonder. I don't know how. It's, you know, it's obviously weird. But good ways, for him. So. I mean, he probably had no idea that this was going to happen. You know, yeah. he's gonna, he's he's getting paid and he, he's probably going to, you know, get some time maybe in Rockford this year. But anyway, he had he had one period this year. This is our fourth goalie in, I want to say, was this 10 games in now? 11 games in? Yeah. Roughly, Something like yeah. that. Yeah. So, but anyway, uh, so it doesn't sound like Soderblom's injury is serious. It's I, I'm sure he's going to be backing up Mrazek, who's yeah. coming back from a groin injury. Who's he suffered a lot of groin injuries in his career. So yeah. it sucks for goalies, man. It's like real nagging. So, oh yeah, I, I hope Soderblom gets more starts. I I like I like how he's playing, man. I think he he's a big kid, and he he's so silky smooth in the crease from you know his post to post I, I like it and i just want to see more out of him because i that buffalo game he deserved a win and the yeah. team kind of really let him down dude we were up 3-1 and they just let buffalo come back that was painful for yeah, me that was painful a yeah. lot. just like yeah. the, the, the kid is right there you know he's gonna get that first win and he's probably thinking about i got a good lead about 10 nine minutes left and they they quit on the kid 
So I, I was real happy he got that win against the Kings. Yeah, but, no, that uh, was that was. Nice. In fact, only only thing that I got to say about, not even about maybe him per se, but was I heard a little uh, through the grapevine through one of these uh, so called sports journalist professionals uh, that we get to <laughs> bear with to yeah. trying to compare him to one uh, number fifty, saying, "Oh, he he reminds me a lot of uh, of Corey Crawford." And I'm like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa! Let's pump the brakes!" Wow. Well, well, and, and here's, the here's the reason. I can see. Behind. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Because he's, the reasoning behind it was that he's square, square to the shooter, and that, I, I'm like, be okay. I'm like, that's supposed to be like, ooh, that automatically qualifies you to be a. Uh, yeah. you know, and he's got I, black pads, right? The yeah. Black pads. Exactly. I'm like, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, there's anything to contribute. Only thing that I could as an as a, a layman that even though I I played, but I didn't play that positional. One thing I can create if I'm you're gonna go tit for tat. I sometimes feel like he doesn't challenge the shooter enough to to cut the angle down. He plays a little too deep in his net, and he's he can move, but he, when he's down, but he doesn't go post to post as quick. He doesn't stretch as stretch Corey. One you're the saying other. as Corey, yeah, yeah. So well, and also he's, too, he's not he's he's not a he's not a a gamer like Corey too. Because I mean yeah. that one goal that was maybe say the. That save against Buffalo was very impressive. That glove save, desperation, diving save. I thought that was really yeah. impressive. He didn't quit on the puck. But, but that first goal maybe against uh, the Jets where he went down and he made a, made a good save, but it maybe even the, was it the first period or was a... I, I he, think it was he, the second they started scoring, I yeah, think. He took, a, he took a shot where it was a nice... He was fully stretched to get it, but he didn't track it well and he lost it, so he pretty much just had to lay on it. But... Yeah, I mean, it's like he wasn't making any miracle goals. Not to mention he's yet to prove if he's going to be the tendy that's going to make a, a yeah. shell save and then come up and you know throw. I'm throw glad he's gloves. up. I'm I'm glad he's up. I think he's I think he's better than Staylock. I think he said that you're the guy you're talking about because like he's square to the shooter. Obviously, that's what you're supposed to do as a goalie. Yeah. But Staylock, he he's not really square to the shooter. He he over challenges. Like yeah. I, I was talking to Mike about this on the podcast, he over challenges shooters because he's not a big of a guy. But when you're old and you can't move as like Soderblom's post to post play, he's fast. Stalock could never do that. Like yeah. he, like if he dropped and you know pushed off to either direction, he's not as fast as Soderblom and not as like silky. I, yeah. I know I say that. I mean he's so smooth about it. The way he he could pop back up and slide over. Stable, yeah. like, he got himself hurt because he overplayed the shot. I don't know if you saw. If I think it was it that um, was against the Islanders. He he made a save. It was yeah. kind of a desperation save. He had to he had to get over fast, and uh, the rebound was right there. And I know that guy. He didn't the guy in the Islanders. He didn't you know he didn't try to get out of the way. He he rammed him. He got him. Yeah, but. Stalock is slower, and obviously he's going to say he's uh, Soderblom is he's more square. Of course he is compared to Stalock. I mean, I'm square. more square than him. So, yeah. And I and I know you you I caught you said that he you think he plays too deep in the crease, but I think when you're that big, you can play that that deep in the crease. I, I know a lot of us don't like Mike Smith, but when Mike yeah. Smith was on the Coyotes, I thought that was the best of his career like those those couple years they were in the playoffs he played really deep in the crease and he relied on his size and he and it kind of you got to be fast you got to have fast instincts when you're playing that deep you got to be ready for it and he did well and i think Soderblom kind of reminds me of coyotes mike smith but faster like he's not yeah. he's not as mike smith is obviously a little older but i think he can move from his post to post a lot faster than Mike Smith, but that's the comparison I see as a goalie. I mean, yeah. Obviously, he's not he's not playing the puck as well as Mike. Mike Smith is one of the best puck playing goalies, you know, out there right now. I think he's. I, I don't. Well, actually, is he backing up or is he done? I, that's, I he, thought he was done. I'm so out of it, but he the guy yeah. could play the puck. I mean, he could shoot it, or he or he could shoot it when he did play. Yeah, but. For, as of right now, that's I see a little bit of Mike Smith in him. The way he he plays deep and I. Corey Crawford, I don't think he's there yet. I mean, no, to compare, I, you, that's you, a we, sample size. To we've seen two games. I don't. I think he's actually 
faster than Crawford. I think Crawford is just more composed in there and he relies on his positioning to stop pucks. And, you know, yeah. you got goalies that like, like Dom Hasek, you know, this dude, it didn't matter what technique he had. He's going to stop it with his face or he's going to stop it with his skate blade. You know, he just, this, the goalies are different. Yeah. So, but anyway, uh, I I hope we see more of them, man. Because I, I this this is when you got to test these young kids out. You got to say, hey, is this is this kid gonna be the one? You know, like all these other teams, they they threw Carter Hart. Um, and when I say they, I mean the Philadelphia Flyers. They yeah. flew. Uh, they threw um, Carter Hart into the fire, and this is like his third or fourth season, I think. And they're just they're still trying to like, hey, are you the guy or what? And I think the Hawks kind of got to do that with Soderblom just just to test it out. Like when you're rebuilding, why not give it a shot? I think, I think at this rate, you, yeah, you you do have to. Also, the you know the sports betters are going to have the over and under on how long it's going to take uh, Mrazek to uh, you know hurt himself again and re <laughs> re-injure the groin. Yeah, indeed, or, or you know break or break his pinky or I don't know, like get tennis elbow and then he'll be out for another two months and then yeah, you'll just have two and three to. Uh, to to jostle between. I mean, at this rate, why not? I mean, I, I I think this is the year where they're really trying to see, like, yeah, who the younger kids can can hack it, and you know, then you can take at least one of those two veteran guys and you know keep one or punt them for something else or just let them flat out walk. I mean, cause yeah, both of those both of the guys one our one and twos right now have made their way around the league. I would think pretty pretty well at this point. So. Yeah, you need to say because they have no nobody really in the farm system, and they haven't had anybody in just in him, the farm system. just Soderblom. That's it. Just Soderblom. Yeah. Is, that's been it. And, you know, we they haven't had, again. They, they haven't had a Corey Crawford type character who almost spent too much time in the. Yeah, the talk stuff. about geez, he paid his dues down there, man. He he started yeah. with Norfolk and moved him to Rockford. I think 2010, he was called up, and I believe his first game he played against the the ducks it oh, was you know the ducks. i'm sorry it's 2009 it year. was 2009 because the ducks were the defend the defending champs right yeah i thought they were defending chance or oh seven no 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 they, they weren't they, that was oh six they won or oh seven whatever but they i'm sorry yeah it was oh seven because it was the, after the lockout it was the hurricanes it was yeah. the ducks it was detroit it was pittsburgh and then i think chicago us uh, mm -hmm. so but the Ducks were a good team. You know, they were stacked. They had a young Corey Perry, uh, Ryan Getzlaff, uh, Temu Solani, Chris Pronger, Scott Niedermeyer. The list goes on and on. But Crawford shut him out his first. Yeah. And I was, and you knew something was special. I mean, he made some big saves at that game. And it, it, it like, it was a good sign. And, you know, I was kind of hoping Soderbloom would, you know, his first game, I, what was it, Buffalo? He looked good, man. I'm like, dude, this is a good sign. You know, yeah. you got some light at the end of the tunnel. Like, hey, we got some hope here. And uh, the Hawks just quit on him. It still pisses me off, you know. It's, I, yeah, they it, really you know, let off the gas Yeah, on, yeah. Just, Like, getting those goals so, so quick to the end. I was like, oh, come on. Like, not now. And what they mm -hmm. died with, they died with, what, 13 seconds left on the clock? <sighs> yeah. Something like that. It was just, just real. Just real disappointing. Yeah. Well, so we got the Kings. Obviously, we talked about it. We got the Kings next game Thursday. I, I I think, like I said, I think the Kings are gonna come out flying. They're probably gonna be pissed off they lost to a team like the Hawks when, you know, they should have got that extra, that extra point in OT and they didn't. So yeah. I think the Hawks will. They're gonna play tough. They they play tough. You know, I think. Do you consider the Jets game a blowout? I don't. I don't necessarily think it was a blowout. I think it was just. It was just a disappointing out. Just, out, uh, I out mean, the, the, the first game of the season was a blowout against you know the the defending champs. They're just too damn fast for the Hawks, and yeah, uh, pretty much a new look Hawks. They have to kind of gel together a little bit. But uh, I don't, you know, I think they're if they play hard, that's all that matters to me. And you know, you get some bright spots like you know, like a Soderblom, like hey, that was you know, he had a good game and stuff like that. And hey, good for Jake McCabe. He's showing some little Brian Kent, like you said, a little soupiness. And you know stuff like that, but I think the I, th I think it's going to be a different game. I think the Kings are going to kind of have a little chip on their shoulder, and I, well, I, yeah. yeah, I think it's going to be a I'm going to say like a maybe a five three Kings win. I think that you're gonna you're gonna you if you get blown out for nothing, you get shut out, and then you have about what four four and a half days worth of rest. 
yeah. you're gonna, before you play again, you're going to want to, you're going to have that on your mind, that whole off downtime. So, I mean, you got to wonder what, uh, coach Luke there is going to, uh, how he's going to have him practice and how he's going to have him prepared before beforehand and then get everybody thinking about it. So when you come out on Thursday evening to play and that's going to, I think that's going to be, they're going to be out there. Right. So it's going to be like, a yeah, yeah. We're in LA. Yeah. A late game. So like, they're going to have those guys thinking about it all week and then some to, to go out there and yeah, maybe at least it'll put out a refreshed effort. At least you hope so. You don't want too much rust to, uh, yeah. to get blades and then, you know what, they're going to, have four and a half days off, and then they're going to stumble out of that too. I mean, you got to build a. So, well, I'll tell you what. I I like Coach Richardson. I think he's bringing out the best in some of these players. I, I'm, you know, I'm obviously I want Kaner to kind of you know take over some games a little bit more, put yeah. some points up there and stuff like that. But it's good to see Taves getting going because I kind of overlooked him. You know, I thought he was done. You know, he didn't yeah. seem motivated, but he's thriving under Coach Richardson right now and. You know, it just sucks when you, <laughs> we got to get both of these guys thriving, you know, 19 and 88 together. And then, you know, I think we'll be, I don't think we're going to be dead last. I, I think we're going to be, you know, towards maybe the bottom. I just think there's so many good teams out there that, you know, they're getting better and we're kind of, you know, staying the same or getting a little worse. So, yeah, we got, we're in the rebuild and everybody else has had time to gel and get a little bit better. Yeah, it's our turn so, now. So, I mean, yeah, it sucks, but. I mean, there's yeah, some teams worse. I mean, obviously Phoenix. They're uh, can playing you, in a college dorm for can, crying out. Can out. you imagine Connor Bedard hearing oh. his name called by the Phoenix Coyotes? And it's like, I dude, I think I'd pull pull an Eric Lindros. I'd be like, you know what? Just trade yeah. me. I, I it's not gonna. I don't want to play here. I'm I'm not being conceded, but I'm too good for this. I don't want to play. Called in that deal. His dad didn't yeah. even want him playing for it. It was. It was it's like I don't want to play college hockey. You know, yeah, it's but, like it's yeah, what it alter, is. Those alternate uh, third jerseys are, are wicked sweet. But, oh you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a couple of the these um, these uh, reverse retro jerseys. I'm a fan of. I you know what, man? I I posted a picture. My first team ever when I was a kid was the Penguins. I played for the Oaklawn Park District, and yeah. uh, I was on the I was on the Penguins, and I was like, dude, the the colors are sweet, and I really love. They called the Robo Penguin. You know, uh, that, yeah, yeah. I, I love it, dude. I love it. I think I'm gonna try to get one. If I if I had to pick one, it would be that one. The, the Blackhawks is the worst in the league, next to oh, the Red weird. Wings. And you know, go figure. The the regular sweaters, the Hawks and the Red Wings have the best jerseys in the game, but the reverse retros puts them at the bottom. Like, the that bottom. makes no yeah. sense. It makes no sense. It's so funky. Yeah, yeah. there's a it, couple it though like the- that look good. There are a couple that look good, and most of the other ones are pretty much either middle of the road. Tampa's is brutal, brutal. Looks like those are like old, like I think they had those for like what one season, yeah, ninety two, something like that. With with the with the bolts on the the arms, it's just too much going on. Then you got the waves, you know, on the yeah. on the bottoms. It, I mean, it's a good idea, but it's just it doesn't look good. It looks terrible. No, and, and it also doesn't help though too when you you have a team that's still a modern era expansion team. Like there's not a lot of history to pull through. Like you get the original yeah. fix. I mean, you can go through any, any incantation over, over the decades, but I mean, with a century, but yeah, with those guys, it's like, well, you either got to come up with the, unless yeah. they have a good old Jersey that like first couple year Jersey you can pull from. Otherwise you're coming up something completely from scratch. Oh and yeah. It, yeah. yeah it's, it's either going to sink or swim. Do you, do you like the uh the Rangers one, the Lady Liberty? I I think I like it, man. The red, white, and blue, and you got the um, yeah, it kind of reminds, Liberty, Mike Richter. Yeah, the Richter one. That's what it yeah. reminds yeah. me of. Stuff like that's that's cool. That's it's maybe pretty sharp. Like, yeah, it's pretty it's sharp. On the podium, I would say it's on the podium, but yeah, it's like towards the top of one of the better ones. But yeah, come on, mother. Pittsburgh's my favorite, and you know I. People I know, our our friend on Twitter, Angie, she gave me a hard time about it. She's she's anti Crosby and stuff she's like that. She's just a devil woman. She's pretty crazy. But anyway, let's get some NHL news. Um, yeah. Well, Ovi set the record for most goals with one team. Do you think he's going to catch the great one? Oh man, I mean, it's how old is he now? I believe he's thirty six. 36. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's got a four year deal in place, though. Yeah. You know what? If he stays healthy 
and well, I guess it, it's a it's a multi head monster. If he stays yeah. healthy, if the organization keeps players around him that will complement, you know, the, yeah. the scheme as a whole, and then if they can stay healthy, I mean, and then depending on whatever else the other teams in the division will do, you know, I mean, it's 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 not impossible. I think you can say it's 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 probable that he could he could do it, but. I guess you gotta have to wait for that perfect storm to uh yeah. to to come together. Um but yeah, I mean I it would I don't want crazy. it to happen, but I think it's gonna happen. I, I think mean, I think he's would, gonna do it. Oh if if it did, it would be a good guy to uh take the take the mantle. Because, I mean he's yeah, I think he's he's incredible, he's pretty, dude. He I mean he scores a lot of the goals from his office, obviously. He yeah. I think his goal that he did score to move him into the all time, like with one team yeah. was a little bit on the bottom of the circles, but the angle was still crazy. Like, yeah. and if I'm picturing myself, you know, being, being a nut against him. And it's like, if you don't move like during that guy's, the guy passing the puck to him, like you have to move with the puck, but you can't cheat because that guy can like, that guy could fake a pass and just make you look stupid. But if you, you got to respect this, you got to respect the puck still. And if, but if you don't move before the pass hits him, you, yeah. you're, you're beat like already. That's how fast his release is. It's insane. Like I've only seen one goalie rob him and it was an incredible save. I think it was Carey Price. He yeah. threw the blocker up, and even Ovi went up to him. He's clapping and gives him a high five. He couldn't believe he stopped it. But that's how, I mean, it, it's hard to do. I mean, Ovi probably been picked up. He probably picked apart Price, you know, yeah. a number of times. But still, stopping Ovi's office shot, you know, we'll call it the office shot. But that that's incredible to do, and it's really hard. And I, I, I don't know which goalie he did it against. I th- I think it might have been against the Coyotes. So, I mean, it's not, I don't even know who's in that for them anymore. But no, that, that goalie had no shot. No shot. No, and, and, and he's a player where, like, he's, he's, if he's going to take that mantle, he's the guy you would think to. Cause he, I mean, he's a big, strong guy. He's not afraid to, to dust it up. He's got, he's got a real personality to him. Like you said, there you go, given the, the goalies that stopped him, you know, the yeah. Prop. I love you know, that. And, yeah, I love and, that. And, and you know, he's a fast, fast guy. And yeah, you know, he, it, it, he's a, he's a little, he's a, di- he's built differently than Gretzky. So yeah, you know, for, for, if you want somebody that yeah wants to come in and do that, and again, do you know, be, have the Iron Man streak to be in the league this long, pulling that. I mean, by all means, like that's the face kind of guy you'd want to uh, want to at least give it a good, solid run at the type of guy you'd, you would hope for. But yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll see. I mean. And I mean, it is it is Washington, so yeah, you know, yeah. I, I mean, he's he's had good playmakers with him for all these years, and he's just, he's a power play guy. I mean, it, yeah, it, it, they take advantage. You know, it, it, give it to Ovi; he's gonna blast it. He he's a good player, man. He's a good leader for that team. I'm I'm glad he got a cup. You know, yeah. I I didn't want him to go down as one of the best goal scorers of all time, and you know, not get that cup. It was I was rooting for him that year. I I think he. I think they played Vegas and yeah. uh, I mean, it was cool for Vegas their first year. They make it to the final and stuff like that. But I'm like, oh man, against Ovi, I, I want to see Ovi win one, you know, even, even uh, TJ Oshie. I, I've, I've always been a fan of Oshie. I'm uh, so glad he left St. Louis, but he oh, was, yeah. he was, a, he was a stud in that, uh, that Olympic shootout against the the Ruskies. He, he just lit up the Russians and that it was awesome. He was an, he's going to be an American hero forever for that. Oh, yeah. But uh, what what else is going on? We got uh, the Golden Knights have won seven straight games. And this is something I didn't see coming when Robin Leonard went down or when they said he's going to be out all year. I thought yeah. it was, it was going to be rough for them, but good for them. Pretty impressive. I, I, I didn't even have them making the playoffs. So. Yeah, no, I figured we're kind of almost like the Hawks are almost going through what they were going through last year with the uh, revolving door of goaltenders. It seemed like, yeah, yeah, they but they're throwing away. Yeah. Chance. And they got the, they got Eichel, you know, I, I haven't really heard yeah. too much about him. I still think Buffalo won that trade. You know, yeah. they got the first rounder. They got, uh, Alex Tuck, who I'm a big fan of. He's, uh, he's kind of an old school you know, old school hockey player. He'll hit. He's like a very, very good in the locker room type of guy. Uh, 
I guess I I mean I we used to call them like bangers, you know, they just they'll hit, they'll do anything it takes to win, stuff like that. I yeah. I, I I think Buffalo won that trade, but time will tell if, you know, Vegas can surprise people, make the playoffs and possibly win a cup, but I, I just don't see it happening with that uh yeah, goaltender that's, Logan Thompson. That's that's a tall order on that for yeah. sure. But I mean, if they can be competitive, I mean, at least they have something to build off of uh when everybody does get healthy. Yeah, so, well, this is the thing I've been wanting to talk to you about. This is going to be the last subject here. So, I don't know if you've seen the uh, Anderson Petrangelo hit the other night. I believe it was, was it Saturday night? I, I, <laughs> so, yeah, I did say, I did catch it. And uh, Yeah, so, I mean, I watched the hit in, like, different angles. Because you have to. You can't, if, I mean, if you watch it from... You know, behind the bench angle, it looks like freaking Anderson is is just out to kill Petrangelo, like while his head's down and you know his back is turned. But then you watch it from the other way. I see Petrangelo, you know, skating with his head down, losing the puck in his feet, and then turning his whole body towards the bench, and then getting smoked from behind. So yeah. this is tough for me. I mean, I, I mean, I've mean, i coached, I've played. I mean, I've, I was a goalie. I never had to worry about getting hit. But I've seen players get hit from behind, and it's dangerous, man. You, you see the numbers. You got to pull back any way you can pull back. They, I don't know if you remember this, but they introduced, like, stop signs on the back of the kids' jerseys. Oh, uh, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, this was, this was in the, the late 90s, and I remember... You know, Illinois hockey was sending out these you know, little stop signs for the jerseys, and I'm like, "Mom, you are not sewing that on my jersey." She's like, "Well, I have to." I'm like, "Mom, I, I'm in, I'm in net. I, you don't have to worry." <laughs> Stuff like that. But anyway, I mean, it was trying to, you know, you're 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 lining up a guy, and you you see his numbers, you see a stop sign. It's like, hey, oh, I got, I, I can't, I can't do this. And maybe it worked, maybe it didn't. I don't know. I'm not saying the NHL should do that because that'd be embarrassing. But oh, yeah. when you see the numbers, you you almost you have to try to stop. But then on the other hand, I see Petrangelo kind of being a little too relaxed out there. Like, come on, dude. Yeah. You lost the puck. You're looking down. La 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 and. Boom! You got smoked, and yeah. you, you turn your back, dude. You turn your back to to the to the play, and you're in a very dangerous spot. And Anderson, you know, he hit him, and it, his head went. It looked it looked brutal. It looked bad, but I, I don't know how I feel about it. He ended up getting a two gamer, Anderson. But yeah. it's tough for me. Uh, what is your opinion on it? I, I look at it. it in a play like that, it's really you're right. It's very fifty fifty. I mean, you can you can follow through with your hit, or okay. So when I watch the play, you know, yeah, Petrolandro comes in and he, he's he's a little too comfortable. He's more focused on the puck and lost between his feet, and so he, he disregards the, the closing closing in the quarters, close quarters that are coming in. Yeah, but Anderson comes in and he. For probably about ten feet, glides into him. His feet stop moving. He glides in, and he hits him in the numbers. Now, I okay, you know, yeah. It way he fell. Petrolandro fell. Looked it looked felt the fall itself. The jerk, the action, the impact looked rough. But at the same point, didn't hurt him that much because he got up, turned around, and was like the second man in the scrum punching on Anderson afterwards. So he got right, he bounced right up and hit him. So obviously yeah. it wasn't, he did, his will he wasn't, injured. wasn't yeah. Yeah. on there. Although the, the flip side to that would be, okay, if Anderson saw that happening, he could have cut the angle down instead of coming around him and kind of sharp, sharpened the angle and came in and kind of throw a shoulder into him and kind of knocked him off balance. Yeah. And then, but at that point he could have been, in the same position where okay he hit he hit Alex now he's on the puck but you had at least a couple other white jerseys in there that would swarm in on you to you know to be in the in the puck battle in the scrum so I guess however you look at tough, it, I, I thought it was, I thought it was I thought it's fifty fifty I thought it was a clean hockey hit but 
again, I just, guess he turned, he turned and it looked, it looked violent. Yeah. You know, it, it looked, it yeah. looked funky because he had a little bit of a whiplash on it when he went down, but he hit him in the numbers. He didn't change levels didn't leave his feet. It was just, it was a, a yeah, good hit. It was he just, wasn't, it was an yeah, fall. he wasn't skating. He was, he, yeah, he right on. into him. So, so I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I talked to my father-in-law a lot. He's a hockey guy and he's a, a Habs fan. And, He's like, that was a dirty hit. I'm like, come on. We're you're literally you're watching it in slow motion, like in different yeah. angles. It's so different when you're out there and yeah. you're going you're full speed, man. It's different. And he knows that he's played, but you know, he's just he's I, I couldn't believe he went I, I, he's old school too. He's an old school like slap shot like in hockey guy, like hits and yeah. stuff. And I said, Well, you were a defenseman. They teach you, man. You can't be putting your head down and turning your back to the play. Oh. That's just insane. And he's, yeah, you're right. You're right about that. But yeah, he goes, it doesn't matter if there's numbers and you get hit. You're you're gonna get you're gonna get punished. And I agree with him there. Uh, you, you can't yeah. you can't be you can't be hitting guys. But like people on Twitter are just, oh, this is dirty. This is dirty. I'm like, put what? yourself in Anderson skates right now. Like you're you're trying to line up a guy from the side, and within a second, not even a second, he yeah. turns. He yeah. turned his head towards the bench, and boom! I mean, it's hard to put the brakes on. It, it's no, it's, you're so almost egging the person the on. So it's almost you're egging the person on to somebody to do something stupid because yeah, yeah, that's a complete disregard to your own well being in that spot. And I mean, all like we had talked about before. Even if it's not very Draper like, like it wasn't obviously he wasn't being targeted. Yeah, we were talking what about I mean, that. Yeah, you what I mean, remember like you, way, yeah, the certainly. way that happened. So I mean, if wait, but the way he fell, it looked bad. But obviously, like he got right up. So if if he had taken that hit, say like the same way, uh, it was very similar to way Kaner got hit on that play you were talking yeah. about earlier. Tell me, like, yeah. So like he got hit. Now Kane stayed down, and somebody jumped in. So okay, but. Pet- Petrangelo got hit and it looked similar, but he bounced right back up. And then obviously he had enough frame of mind to know that, okay, the closest Jersey probably hit me. So he turned around and started swinging yeah. while somebody else is already getting swung. So obviously no harm, no foul on that. But so just to say you're going to get two games for that, but, 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 but what else? I mean, the league is so inconsistent on discipline for, yeah. for, for well, everything. Did you so see the, the recent suspension with Matthew Kachuk? He high sticked uh, quick. I guess they got the stick went between the, they call it the cat eyes of yeah. this cage and got quick in the face. He got a two gamer for that. And yeah. I mean, like you said, yeah, the spin the wheel, you get two, you get five, stuff like that. But I think I would have gave Anderson a five in a game just because it, you know, it was a hit from behind type of thing. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, <laughs> yes, you got to have respect. You can't hit players from behind. But in a sense, you can't. You can't play stupid. Like you can't. You, you lose the puck, yeah. dude. Pick your head up and look what's like. You, take the hit. Don't yeah. turn your back. You know it's a it's it's a hard. It's fast. The game is fast. Yeah. Oh yeah. So before like people are going, oh he's dirty. You, you you gotta you gotta look and like think about stuff. Like it's it's the game is so fast. You can't just say, oh it's a dirty dirty hit. He's got to get suspended five games and stuff like that. Oh yeah. man, you got to look at the big picture. Like. Look yeah. at the hit. Look at the guy with the puck who turned his back. I mean, well, it, we live in the world of instant gratification. So everybody yeah. wants, oh, it's my team. All the homers and the meatballs come oh, out. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. I remember uh, when Stalock got hurt, uh, The somebody on Twitter was talking to me, uh, an Islanders fan, like, oh, goal, he's all out. He's all over his crease. He deserves to get hit. I'm like, dude, he just made a save and he overplayed a shot. He's still in the crease and the guy rammed him. Like, yeah, I, I, I was more, I, like I said, I was more pissed off that none of the Hawks attacked the guy. They sat and watched their goalie lay there. I was furious. I'm like, That's dude. Sad. And then a day later, somebody posted Ed Belfour on the Blackhawks yeah. taking a swing at somebody. Yeah. He, he does that, and Stop Tony Amani comes in and starts fighting the guy. Tony Amani, you're, that's your that's your star. Even he defended his goalie. Not one hawk defended Stalock when he got hit like that. I was 
I was so pissed off. I'm like, Domi, jump the boards, take the take the ten minute game misconduct, and take care of business. Like that can't happen. You cannot touch your goalie like that. That's what I was more pissed off about. But getting yeah. getting to your point, oh yeah, the homers, you know, they're biased to their their team. Well, come on, dude. And I I flipped it around on the guy. I said, dude, if that was say say Domi, say Max Domi went into Sorokin. Your starting goalie, who's a very good goalie and injured him for three weeks, you would want Domi suspended for 15 games. Like, be fair. You know what I mean? You, you got to be fair about it. So people got to just, uh, you know, look at the big picture. You got to look at the full play. And before you, you, like, if you watch the hit right away, oh, yeah, that's a 15 game or dirty hit. No, man, look at look at the guy with the puck. Study it a little bit before you jump to freaking conclusions like everybody else yeah. does in this world. No so, kidding. That's yeah. it. You, you look, but I think that's the thing too is that when you see plays like that happen where your your goalie's getting run on, it you know yeah. you always got to think is that that's they're really from what I've heard is that they're trying to really instill that from the younger kids through the minors into the pros, and it's like it, to me it looks like you got a heart problem because <laughs> you, you uh, the Hawks especially from you seeing you know from watching some of your more favorite goalies who have come through, you know, like it seems to be a consistent thing where teams come to town and they know that they can run, run the Chicago goalies and the refs are going to throw them absolute mercy. Yeah. On it. And it's ridiculous with no, cause there's no retaliation. There's no pushback. Yep, there, that's, I mean, you don't want to take a silly penalty, the silly penalty to offset that, but you want to, you know, it's worth it. it's worth it though. if you're, you're going to sell it, sell it. But if you, you're not, then like, hey, like you got to at least give somebody a nice little shot where there's no padding to be like, do it again and you're going to get more of it. Yeah, that pissed me off so much. That, that was, oh man, I was so ticked off about that. And I don't really get mad about, you know, Hawks games that much anymore. But I was that that I was just so furious. Like, come on, dude, that stuff. Pee wees take care of business. Like yeah. a freaking 12 year old will don't ever touch my goalie again. Stuff like that. But yeah. Well, anyway, man, I, dude, you got anything else? No, no, my friend, I, uh, I'm just following, following your lead on this well, one. I appreciate you coming on with me, man. I know, uh, Mike, uh, recently had a, him and his wife just had a baby boy. Everything's going great. Congratulations to them. Yeah, Mike, uh, doing good. He's going to be busy for a while. So get some sleep, bud. You know, I know it's, it sucks. You, you're going through it all over again, but <laughs> good luck hey. to you, buddy. But uh, anyway, everybody, thank you for uh, listening and thank you for engaging with us on Twitter. I know me and me and the lion over here are always yapping with people and talking hockey. We love it. So hit us up anytime you want. And Dom, thanks again for coming on. And hopefully we see you again. Absolutely, sir. I'm here when you need me. All right. Well, this is the Tomahawk and we are out of here. Thank you.